My name is Guido Rar, and I'm here with my wife Lee and our three teenage boys on our cabin, our fishing cabin on the Deschutes River. And it's the time of COVID-19 uh, and social distancing and quarantining and all of that. So we're trying to find ways to get out of the city. And so we're here and we've been doing a lot of fishing and tying flies. And so I know that a lot of you are stuck in your homes, uh, possibly with your kids. And this is, I'm going to teach you how to tie a couple of fly patterns for fly fishing. And it's something that you can do at home. And if you don't have the materials, you can order those and have them delivered by the mail. But these are some critical, easy patterns. Now, before we tie the flies, I'm going to show you how to tie. Uh, my producer, Henrik Rahr, is going to, and I are going to go down to the river and collect some natural insects. And the reason we're going to do this is because trout, when they feed, develop what's called a search image. In other words, they're in the river, things are coming down at them, and they target specific natural insects in the river, and they recognize those, and they prefer to feed on those. And so if you tie a fly that looks like that natural insect underwater, you're going to catch a lot more trout. And so that's the whole game and fly fishing and fly tying is trying to tie the fly that imitates the natural insect in the river. So first, we're, we're going to go down to the river and collect some insects, and then we're going to tie flies that look just like those. And now, let's see what we got. Oh, yeah. There it is. That's the stonefly nymph. Terranarsis. Trout love to eat these. Okay, now we're going to tie the uh, stonefly nymph. This is the larval stage of, it's actually called the salmon fly. The genus is Terranarsis. And it's a nymph, uh, we just saw those in the river. It's, it's a rubber leg stonefly nymph. It's pretty basic. Now the main thing to know is that this is what it looks like in silhouette, which is very important. And when it's in the river, it floats it hangs like this and it's designed to do that with the tip up and that's better so you don't snag the bottom it's tied on a kind of a jig hook it's actually a European nymphing hook barbless and and this is the way it and it's got a little bit of a curve to it which is what those nymphs do when they're when they're you know sinking through the water column so that's the way it's going to fish and that's why I've kind of aimed the legs down but I mean look at that I mean it looks so dead so realistic okay so the first thing we'll do is we'll take one of these hooks and put it in the vise. And it's a um, fire hole 523, size six. And we're gonna start off by giving it, uh, putting a, a tungsten bead on it. Now you have to have a lot of weight on these nymphs because uh, stonefly nymphs are always on the bottom. Uh, now before we tie, we're going to do something to give it a little bit more of a realistic look because they do curl when they're floating in the river or sinking in the river. So we're going to bend this one a little bit to give it a little bit of a bend. And, and we don't want to have it too flat. It's good to have it kind of curled. Now the, this, after we put the bead on there, I'm sliding it towards the back of the hook and I'll show you why in just a minute. And now I'm going to wrap the hook shank with thread. Oops, I've got my lines tangled there. Okay, wrap the hook shank with thread like that. Then we'll tie off the tag end. And the first thing we're going to do is tie in the feelers. So I've got rubber, uh, this is kind of a rubber leg material in it, and you just kind of peel off the individual pieces. And I'm going to try to get this. So I've got just one. You can see what I did there. Now I'm going to tie, I'm going to cut off a piece for the feelers, and then I'm going to slide the bead on, and I'll show you why we did that. Okay, first we're going to go like that, okay, and then we'll tie that off, clip that off like that. Tune this up a little bit. And now I'm going to do a whip finish just to secure the feelers on there. Okay, there we go. God, this looks so realistic. This is really an effective fly for trout, but it's also it's an amazingly effective fly for steelhead. So a lot of times we'll be trout fishing with a big heavy nymph on the bottom of the river, and a steelhead will pick it up. But this, these nymphs catch some of the biggest trout of the year, are um, these stonefly nymphs. Okay, now we're going to get some more of that uh, leg material. And I just dropped that piece on the ground. Here it is. Okay. 
Now we'll do the uh, the tail. And again, I'm going to do it here. I tie it down kind of in a loop. It seems to work. This is kind of tough stuff to work with, this rubber leg. But I'm going to pull it tight and I'm going to wrap and wrap and wrap. And you see I wrap it way down to the bend of the hook. Again, I'm trying to get a curled body, which I think is more realistic uh, for these nymphs. Now the next thing we'll do is add some lead wire. And you may ask yourself, why am I using a tungsten <laughs> bead head and lead wire? And I'm, Because I want this to drop right through the water column. In the river, we're going to fish this in the deepest, fastest boulder water. Right where those big stone fly nymphs live and where the biggest trout live. And if it's not bouncing along the bottom or close to it, you're not fishing it uh, deep enough. Now I'm going to put some chenille. Actually, this is something called vernille. Um, it's just like chenille. Um, this is the body material. And we'll clip, clip off a good piece like this and I'm going to lay it in right behind the lead wire so that it's kind of it makes the body even. And then I'm going to wrap it all the way back down to where those tail fibers are. And I'm going to wrap forward kind of towards the front of the fly and we'll tie in the abdomen right, of the nymph. The abdomen of course is the uh, the posterior section of the nymph's body and where the kind of shoulders and and head are is called the uh, thorax. Alright, I'm going to tie a little bit more there, a little bit more, boom. Now I'm going to tie this off, okay, with my thread and I'm going to pull this back a little bit and now we're going to tie in um, the legs and this is a little tricky uh, to do this part right, but the way we'll do it is we're going to wrap forward to kind of a little distance behind the head, tie in a section of leg. There you can see it. I'm going to give myself a lot of tag ends because we're going to actually tie uh, leg seg uh, knots in there, in the leg, tie, tie a little overhand knot to make it look like a bended leg. I'll show you how to do that. It's really, it's not, the trout don't, you know, swim up to it and, and, and say, hey, is the leg ultra realistic or not, but uh, it, um, I think it helps. Okay, there's the front leg, there's the back leg. Technically you should tie uh, three legs in, but uh, I generally am happy with two. I think it makes the fly tying a lot easier because you'll see this is really a tricky um, fly to tie. So we'll go back up to the front, we'll tie in that another leg across, right, so they're they're on either side of each other and then often when I and then I'll pull this other leg off so that we now have two legs coming out from either side. Okay now I'm going to wrap forward and I'm going to get in front of those two legs all the way to the head and now we'll wrap the uh, the chenille. In this case it's actually called vernille but either vernille or chenille works just fine. Okay then we're going to wrap forward and we're going to wrap forward and then we're going to pull these back and do a couple wraps in front and another wrap and then we're going to tie, the, tie off the head. You can see with all this rubber legs everywhere it gets tricky. I didn't say this was an easy fly to tie. It's not. But it is a fish catcher. Okay, we'll do that. Now I'm going to t clip off the tag end and we're going to do what's called a whip finish and uh, um, if you don't know the whip finish, you should learn it. It's just really a series of half hitches. I'm going to move this up a little bit. And I'm not going to teach you the whole thing, but you basically do this and then you pull it through. You can just do half hitches or you can teach uh, yourself the whip finish. Uh, if any fly tire worth of salt knows this inside and out. And so we're going to give it a series of half hitches. At this point, you can put a dab of glue or head cement uh, there to um, to hold that in place. Okay, now obviously we have the fly, but the legs are too long, right? No great surprise. So now I'm going to pinch the feelers together and make them even, and then I'll pinch the tails together and make them even. And now we are going to tie um, half hitches in this, and I'm going to tie them in a way that the I'm going to make that half hitch so the points up because I remember this is going to ride upside down and I'll show you. So you want to get the 
knot pretty close to the body. And see, there's a knot, and it's it's like that. And then we're going to tie a half hitch going this way. Okay, we'll do another half hitch and we'll take it right next to the body like this and then I'll tie it tight. Good, there's another leg. I made that a little bit too far away. You want to, if you can, make them even, unlike that. Okay, we got some legs there and then we'll do the, the these ones like this and then I roll that, that, uh, that, that single overhand knot in the rubber leg pretty close to the body because remember you saw that natural the legs weren't that huge and then I'm going to do another one here coming up through and this is a major pain working with these rubber legs but and so I, I, I pull it tight to make my knot okay now I'm going to cut these even with a pair of scissors there we go there's two legs coming out like that and then we'll do the same thing here with these ones. Try to make them as even as I can. They're not perfect, but there we go. Wow, look at that rubber. Oh, oh deadly, deadly, deadly. And now I'll give you a look at the rubber leg stone fly. And it just goes through the water column like this, looking like a nymph that has just lost its way and is just desperately trying to get back under a rock. And I'll see the silhouette that and that thing is so heavy it just drops but it's got a barbless hook jig hook it floats like that and another thing you can do <clears throat> which I like to do if I'm fishing with a strike indicator I'll tie the line to here and then I'll take a trailing line off and do a little bead head nymph floating behind it about 18 inches behind it with some lighter tippet but that is the rubber leg stone fly nymph friends super effective pattern and I hope you enjoy giving it a shot on your vice, see if you can tie one. Hey, I want to thank my producer and photographer, uh, Henrik Rahr, for all of his hard work making this film. Okay, enjoy.